51. In the laboratory, hydrogen chloride, which is HCl gas, and ammonia, which is NH3 gas, often escape from bottles of their solutions and react to form the ammonium chloride, which is NH4Cl solid, the white glaze often seen on glassware. Assuming that the number of moles of each gas that escapes into the room is the same, what is the maximum partial pressure of HCl and NH3 in the laboratory at room temperature? And then they give us a little hint. They say the partial pressures will be equal and are at their maximum value when at equilibrium. Okie dokie. So ultimately, we want to find out that maximum partial pressure of HCl and NH3. Now, we can't find any partial pressures if we don't have a balanced equation. So the first thing we have to do is we just have to write a balanced equation. Now, it was describing that hydrogen chloride, HCl, plus ammonia, right, this and this, is coming together to react to form ammonium chloride. So it looks like it's a formation question or a formation equation. So I'm going to start off with HCl. And that's gas plus the ammonia, which is NH3. And that's also a gas. And this will form, right? It says to form, so yield, NH4Cl. And they said that that's a solid. Now, as I'm writing this, I'm just making sure that is this a balanced equation? And it looks balanced to me, so we don't have to add any coefficients. And now they're talking about partial pressures. So... In essence, we are looking for the pressures of HCl and of NH3. So the pressure of HCl and NH3. So I'll say P of NH3. That's what we're looking for, right? Now, just know that the word partial pressure, or partial pressure just means a pressure of a specific component in your reaction. So partial pressure is only talking about one specific uh, compound. So that's why we say partial pressure of HCl, partial pressure of NH3. It basically means the same thing as specific pressure of HCl is, the specific pressure of NH3 is. Now they did say that they were going to be equal to each other, right? Or the same. So if I don't know what it is, right? I know that they're going to be the same. So maybe I'm just gonna label this as X and this is X, right? I don't know what it is, so that's what I'm just trying to find out. Or maybe what I'll do is I will say question mark, and then I'm just going to say that these have to be the same. Okay. Now, keep in mind that a partial pressure, pressure values, come from equilibrium constants. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to link a equilibrium constant with the pressure values, right? From writing the expression of products divided by reactants. Now, since we're dealing with pressures, we're probably gonna be solving for, for a Kp value, right? P stands for pressure. So what would be the specific Kp expression for this uh, balanced equation? Well, remember it's products divided by reactants and only gases and aqueous are allowed. So for example, the NH4Cl, it's a solid. No solids allowed, not coming in on my KP expression. So I need something as a filler to replace this numerator. That's just a one. Now I come on over here and I say that, okay, these two are gases, so they're allowed. So I'm just going to say that it's going to be the, actually, we'll, maybe we'll do it in blue. It's the pressure of HCl times by the pressure of NH3. And that's my expression. I don't need to raise this to anything because they had a one in front, right? Because remember, it's those raised to the coefficients, but since both of these have a one in front, I don't have to raise anything. And this would be the expression, right? And now since we know that these are the same, and I'm trying to solve for this, that means that this H, uh, the pressure of HCl would be an X, and this would be an X. But I can't really solve this unless I have my equilibrium expression constant, right? The Kp value. So now I'm going to hold this off until I can find out what that K value is. Now there's another equation that links any equilibrium constant with its 
delta G value, aka the Gibbs free energy. And we could always use our Gibbs free energies uh, values in the back of a textbook, just as long as we're at room temperature. And voila, we are at room temperature. So those constant values in the back of the textbook are fair game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put this over here for now, and I'm just going to list out my delta G values that we're going to be using for this problem. So the delta G value for the hydrogen chloride HCl is negative 95.299. Maybe I'll just bring this out a little bit. Oops. Let's bring the whole thing. NH3 is negative 16.5. And then the NH4Cl is negative 202.87. And now I can kind of get rid of this. We have much more room. Okay. So I want to find out that K, uh, that K value, right? And this equals the E button on the calculator, all raised to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So the R value is a constant value, never changes. For this, it's always going to be 8.314, and the units are going to be joules per mole times Kelvin. So for delta G, I'm only allowed joules, and for temperature, I'm only allowed Kelvin. Now just know that room temperature, room temperature is always 295 degrees Celsius, which translates into 298.15 Kelvin, if you want to add that extra 0.15 in there. So we have to use the Kelvin value. So I'm just going to say that this temperature, since it said room temp, is 298.15 Kelvin. And now I just have to solve for that delta G. And that's where these values are going to come in. So how am I going to get a overall delta G for the whole entire reaction from these individual numbers? Well, that's this formula right here. Delta G for the whole entire reaction, the Gibbs free energy for the whole entire RxN, which is reaction, equals the sum. So that symbol just means you got to just add up. You got to add up all the products minus the sum. You got to add up all the reactants. But now, are those numbers going to be the same? Or are they going to be different? Well, it always goes back to its coefficients. But for each one, we only had one. So we had one HCl, we had one NH3, and we had one NH4Cl, which means that for each one of these, you just times them by their coefficients. But in this case, it's going to be one for every single one of them. So those numbers will stay the same. Now let's just sum them up. It's literally HCl plus NH3. So I just have to add those two values together. I don't have to add anything on the product side because there's only one product. So the product side would ultimately be the same number, 202.87. Let's see what the reactant side is. Negative 95.299 minus 16.5. So I get a negative 111.799. And now I'm going to use those numbers to solve for my delta G. Delta G for the whole entire reaction is negative 202.87 minus negative 111.799. And let's see what we get. Delta G for the whole entire reaction is negative 202.87 minus this value. And I get negative 91. So it's spontaneous. It's a negative value and 0 0.071. The units here are in kilojoules because in the back of the textbook, it's kilojoules per mole, but you multiplied your, by your coefficients. Those are your mole values. So the moles will cancel out. But now remember, if we're ultimately using this formula, the R value said, mm -mm, only in joules, we have kilojoules. So the next thing I have to do is I just have to convert the kilojoules into joules. That's easy. We just times by a thousand. So, you know, similarly, you could just take the decimal, move it to the right uh, three times. So this would be negative 91071. So negative 91,071 joules. And that's the value that goes here. Negative 9171 joules. And now we can write out our equation. 
k equals e raised to the negative. The formula has the negative in there. So let's just bring this a little bit down. And the delta g is a negative value. So just remember what that means, right? Negative times a negative is a positive. And then we're going to divide it by the 8.314, divide it by the room temp, 298.15. And what I would do is I would just clean this up, make this into one number so that we could take the E value and raise it to that. So K equals E raised to the negative times a negative is a positive. So I can just say 91,071 divided by 8.314. And I'm going to press divided by again by 298.15 just to get that in the denominator. And I get a long list of numbers, 38, just kidding, 36. 36.739 and a bunch of other numbers, right? I will not round. I'm going to use the whole number. I'm just not going to write it just to kind of save space. And let's find out what that equilibrium constant is. So second LN, and I'm just going to grab that value, press enter. And there we go. So now let's say it's still not the the full answer. So let's just say 9.033 times 10 to the uh, 15th. And remember, since we're dealing with pressures, we said that this specifically was going to be a KP. Does it really matter? No, but just to show you that, you know, we're dealing with a, a pressure equilibrium value. Now we just have to use this formula. So maybe, let's see, do I have room? I think I do. And maybe if I can, let's see, can I pull this up a little bit? I think I can. Beautiful. Just so that I have more room, but did that really help? Uh, it helped a little bit. So now let's work over here, guys, right? KP equals one over these two. So essentially it's KP equals one over. So I'll, I'll do it with you guys, right? It would be X times X, but remember X times X is just X squared. So it's going to be one over X squared. And now I know this value, right? This value is going to be the 9.033 times 10 to the 15th. So now we just have to do some math. 9.033 times 10 to the 15th equals 1 over x squared. If we cross multiply, right? Maybe I can write this down. Whoop. Let's see. It would be 9.033 times 10 to the 15th x squared equals 1. So now all I got to do is just divide, right? And I'm really, I'm really trying to see if I could maybe make some room here without getting rid of anything. I hope I'm doing a good job. I can, I can bring this up a little bit more. There we go. That gives me a little bit of room. Okay. Let's divide now. So divide on each side by 9.033 times 10 to the 15th, right? Times 10 to the 15th. This will cancel. We are left with x squared. We're almost there. x squared equals. So one, I mean, technically, we should take the whole number, right? So maybe I'll just say one divided by this whole value. And I get that 1.1. I'm taking the whole values because I'm not at the final answer. So I don't really want to round. So 1.107 times 10 to the negative 16th. When I do the square rooting, because that's what I have to do, I'm not going to round. So I'm going to say second square root and take the whole value. And there we go. So maybe I can bring this over a little bit. A little, little, little tiny bit. Maybe I'll throw this up here. And maybe I'll put this up here. 
because x equals, whoop, what happened here? I don't want that, okay. x equals 1.05, we'll say, times 10 to the negative eighth. And that's where, you know, that was the partial pressures of each one, they were the same. So I can just come over here and say, I finally found them out. Partial pressure of HCl is 1.05, times 10 to the negative eighth. Partial pressure of NH3, 1.05 times 10 to the negative eighth. Units, the only units that are allowed for the K expression is ATM. So they're both ATM, ATM. And that is your final answer. Box it off. Thank you so much. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Um, subscribe to the channel. I hope you're doing well out there. And let's keep studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. Thanks for being part of this community. We're almost at 75. 75. Oh my God. I, I, I only can imagine 25,000 subscribers. And that's because of you guys. So thank you so much. Let's keep going. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.